Hello and welcome to the AOSC 10 pre-race show for round number two. Of course, Matt Cavanagh joining you alongside the boys are back, mate. It's Daniel Leap and Matthew Norris. Welcome back, guys. Another week in the box. Yeah, good evening, mate. Great to be back and uh, really looking forward to seeing, obviously, we, we saw a fantastic round for, for round one and cannot wait to see what we're in for for round two. Absolutely. Round two at Road America should really spice things up. Into Lagos was a breeze. It was excellent to see all the cars on circuit again for round one. Yeah, no, I'm excited after round one. There's some exciting things to talk about in the show today. We've got a couple of new features to put in, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to keep keep that uh, going as we go through the show. We need a shout-out, obviously, to our sponsors, Jink Shifters, of course, Sydney Computers, AJ Insurance Services, SimRigs.com, Track Cams for Gourmet, Six Gear Imagery, and Race Circuit Art Australia. And of course, if you haven't already, log on to the AOSC TV on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to that one. Don't forget, coverage starts Friday night at 9.10 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that's 9.10 p.m. on Friday night, the 22nd of January for round two, uh, where we're going to get things underway with a 300 kilometer a race this time from Road America. But uh, let's get back to last week's round, guys. As we look at the results here from round number one, you can see it's James Scott took out the win once again there, of course. Uh, superb effort from him right behind though, Corey Shepard. He, he put it all the way to him to the end and put the pressure on. Then it goes back to Ryan Wood, Tom Freer, Kyle Stokes, Brenton Hobson, Adam Briggs, Bailey Frid, Brian Borg, and Jordan Ross rounds out the top 10, guys. Norrie, it was an interesting race. Uh, James Scott and Corey Shepard so close across that finish line. Absolutely. That top three, but they were just running together and it was awesome to see my, my pick of the round, I would say was, was Ryan Wood on debut in AOSC and to come out P3. That is a phenomenal effort. And he's really going to be punching at the front end of this field. Yeah, Dan, it was, it was very interesting, wasn't it, there? Uh, it all came down to some pit stop strategies and things like that. Had a, had a big factor in how the result went down, but it was the top three that stood out, uh, the close finish across the end, uh, and Ryan Wood, like you say, an impressive uh, first outing in the AOSC 10. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, when we watched through the whole thing, we were really surprised at just how much of a gap our top three were able to extend over the course of that. Uh, as I was saying there, the pit stops, strategy really come into play as well and you know we were a little bit worried with james scott the way he went out like came in a little bit later than these guys the pit stop was about a second quicker and we were questioning that to whether he was maybe going to have enough in there for the fuel to get that home or not but um you know came out with a massive lead and then to see how it unfolded at the end of the race i mean those those three really in for a shot of it and uh, i think as as no so rightly put ryan would absolute stand out on debate um and and really showing what he's got uh, potentially to unlock over the course of this championship. And we might see him up there for a few more podiums still yet to come. Yeah, and we will talk about it very shortly, but of course, a lot of Premier Racing and Synergy Sim Racing guys in the top 10 as well. So we'll go through that in just a second. But what it does bring us to is a new segment in our show, which is the Sydney Computers photo finish of the round. And this week, of course, we could not go past one and two, which is James Scott and Corey Shepard. 0.041, so that's 41 thousandths of a second between those front splitters going across the line. It was all defensive from James Scott right down to that finish line, guys. Check out the photo. How good is this from Sith Gear Imagery? They've supplied this for us. That's how close it was after 34 laps. It's almost like Lightning McQueen just getting the tongue over the line. James has just got the snout just over there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that really was set up, at, you know, we were just saying before with that pit stop, but the run that... Um, Corey was able to get through that final corner, really put him in a, in a fantastic opportunity and uh, only just missed out by the smallest of margins there on the win. Yeah, I think a couple of chances there he did have to, he could have taken the risk possibly. I don't think he wanted to come unstuck. We were talking about James Scott likes to turn in a little bit early. Maybe that just took him off his race line a little bit, but mate, I'll give it to the guys. It was exciting racing and Ryan Wood just sitting back waiting. Just one moment if they ran wide on one corner and he would have been at number one. So. What a way to kick off round number one. A couple of other battles further down. Hobson and Briggs was a good battle to watch as well throughout the race. So I think we're going to see plenty more of that as the races continue. Uh, and I can't wait to see what really the series number 10 brings us. Of course, this was race number 179 in the AOSC history. So uh, race 180 next week. It just goes to show a lot of these rounds coming together. Surprisingly, though, this is only we've only been to this track a few times. Absolutely. I mean, not. 
much in there and a lot, not a lot of data for these guys to look at to get the most out of the cars, not really knowing how everyone's going to sort of stack up and um, to see what they were able to come away with, how close the racing was outside of that top three throughout the remainder of the field. You know, take nothing away from that top three. I mean, they were lightning quick the, the whole way through it, but the rest of the field very close together um, and some standout battles the whole way through also. Well, let's have a quick look at some of the uh, post-race race control decisions and license points. You see him come up there. A uh, couple of drive-through penalties, some rear dresses, and, and a couple of net codes in there. So nothing too much to talk about in there, guys. I don't think we're going to see too much going on. One thing, though, is uh, I do notice that Dyson's or Andrew Dyson already has a couple of penalties there. So that could maybe impact a little bit later on in the season because we know he's probably a bit of a contender to be in that top 10 uh, after 16 rounds. Any one of those three drivers that already has 10 license points, they really want to clean up their driving for Road America. Really watch it because, uh, like you say, Manny, they're going to pick up points through the season. And when we talk about points and uh, race incidents, now let's talk about the AJ Insurance Services impact of the round. And, of course, this week, you can see it up there, all thanks to our guys from Six Gear Imagery. Rob Harris on the was uh, outside of three wide, a bit of wheel contact before flipping. Check out this thing on two wheels, mate, the big jig shifters logo on the side, and the Holden Commodore was up in the air. Yeah, it was really tough landing too. He was able to get that car back underway, but um, yeah, typical spot. A lot of incidents uh, through that part of the track, and it was only I think lap two when that unfolded. So um, yeah, everyone still tightly compressed as they worked their way through trying to find that little bit of space. And unfortunate for Rob, their massive impact with the wall um, was able to get that car back out. Came in, took the fast repair, got back underway really not the night he would have liked to have had. And, um, you know, for anyone who enjoys watching the, the stuff that Rob has put out, you also jump onto his Twitch stream because it's a great bird's eye view of everything that went on from it. Yeah, that was an exciting Twitch stream, wasn't it, Nori? It was exciting. I was just going to say Rob's incredibly unlucky and running the number 13, that's bound to happen. You think you'll change numbers for next week, maybe? You sure? If you don't want to end up on your roof, you do. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, there are a couple of segments we're going to keep bringing to you throughout the AOSC pre-race shows. Of course, we're going to keep them coming. All thanks to our great sponsors out there. Let's check out, of course, though, the split two round one results. Of course, this is the, the guys that didn't make it into the main game but came into the second race. As we go through those, you can see Rick uh, Sibra coming out in number one here, uh, Brent Nitschke in second, Chris Barnes in third, Wade Cheedy in fourth, Aaron Gilbert in fifth. Then we go back to Marty Hansen, Henry Thompson Kircher, Josh Morris, Jaden Borg, and Joseph Daly ran out of top 10 in this one, guys. What do you think? A couple of names in there to watch out for too. I'm going to really pull out two of them. I'm going to pull out Jet Johnson out of P11, on debut in AOSC. Fantastic effort to be up there. And uh, Josh Morris, he really didn't deserve to be in split two, so he's going he's gonna to ru rustle some feathers next time he gets into split one. Absolutely. And I mean, through, even though it is a slightly uh, smaller field from what we've seen, another very close way to finish out this, um, you know, for the, the lead battle of split two, uh, Sabra and Nishki, 0.12 second uh, between them, absolutely nothing in it. Uh, Barnes a little bit further behind, similar to what we saw from from that first race, but down throughout the field, some some awesome battles. Like you were saying, no, Josh Morris in there, Jaden Borg, Joseph Delaney, only a second or three seconds, sorry, covering those three cars as they concluded the end of the race just for that top 10 position. So even though they may not have made the main gate, may not have made the, the top race, put on a hell of a show nonetheless. Absolutely. Yeah, it was great watching and, and good to see a couple of new names in there. One I do notice being a fellow Territorian is obviously Shane Newins from the Darwin Sim Racing Amateurs and is this the first time we've seen a Darwin racer in there, boys? Probably. Yeah, I think it might be. Uh, yeah. uh, having a look at some of the history. So it's good to see we're, uh, we're expanding our wings and get a lot more sim racers on board for this Season 10. But, uh, yeah, fantastic there. Don't forget, of course, our great sponsors of the series, Jink Shifters. They've got a great competition at the moment, guys. They, they've uh, given us these fantastic black Jink shirts that you can get from their website, of course, jinkshifters.com but they're also giving away some white shirts now. So they've got some limited edition gear up for 2021 with the new white shirts they're giving away uh, to one lucky racer, of course. So share a picture in the comment section or post or hashtag Jink Shifters on Instagram with you wearing your Jink Shifter merchandise. We might get into that, I reckon, uh, or your sim setup. So 
Of course, you can go to Jinx Shifters on Facebook, check them out. They've got a post there. You just go in the comment section or get on your Instagram, hashtag Jinx Shifters. Uh, show us your Sims, Sims setup or uh, you wearing your T-shirt. Uh, maybe you've got stickers up everywhere around your place. They're great products, Australian-made manufacturers. So please check that out at jinxshifters.com or on their Facebook page, which also leads us into another great sponsor of the show, guys. And, and the third segment we're going to bring you in this pre-race show, which is the simrigs.com. Show us your rig. So we want to see all the sim rigs that you've got out there. Uh, we know, know on our Discord channel that we do have a, a section set up and we've actually had someone send this in. If you're part of the series, uh, you want to get involved, either send us a video on the Discord or a photos of your, your rig and let us know what exactly how your setup is. Um, or you can just get us through the Facebook page, message them through because we want to go through what everyone's sort of running out there. And this week it was Matt Farah, who is actually one of our race officials who sent something in. Yeah, absolutely. Matt Farah has sent in his rig and it's a fantastic looking rig. Although it's usually just is using for issuing penalties, but uh, he's got himself some good stuff. There's a track racer TR8 with triple monitor mount, uh, three ViewSonic VX3276 2Ks. They're pretty good. And uh, Fanatec V3s with the brake performance kit. So that helps for stopping things. Uh, Fanatec CSW V2.5 with the McLaren GT3 V2 rim and the Fanatec limited edition shifter. So Matt Farrow has got some awesome stuff there, even though he's just usually giving out penalties. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you got to make sure you can practice with the boys because I think he's actually involved in a couple of other series as well. So I reckon he'd do a few laps in that setup. And it's a pretty good little setup for a home setup, really. I mean, I really love the guys that have some very unique setups. The guys that go and bolt it to the kitchen table and put the monitor on there for the racing and things like that, you know. We've, we've got everything, don't we? We've got guys with these impressive rigs uh, all set up, room, specially designed, air-conditioned, climate-controlled, all that stuff. And then you've just got that pure that pure enthusiast who doesn't have the room that just bolts it to whatever he can, the desk, you know, all that sort of stuff. We want to show everything really in this segment, all thanks to simrigs.com. So send them in, whether you're on the Discord or on the Facebook channel, just message them in and uh, we'll go through them as the shows go on. But, mate, I'm excited to talk about round number two, guys. It's coming up next and we're going to Road America. So let's have a look at this one. So Road America, here we go. Let's have a look at this one. It looks like we've got 14 corners to negotiate in this one. It's a 6.51 kilometre track. 300 kilometers is going to be the sprint round here. Guys, what are we thinking? It's a fantastic circuit. I mean, I've been fond of Road America since early IndyCar days, and you know, it's it's very challenging. It has changed a lot over the years, but still delivers absolutely standout racing. As you're saying, Matt, 14 turns, uh, 6.5 kilometers. So about double the length of what we saw last week out at Brazil. Um, the car's going to be relatively quick around there. We're expecting lap times around the 207.56 uh, range uh, comparative to the last time we were there, and it has been a while since we've been here uh, in the old car. We were doing around the 2 minute 10 range. So um, past winners that we've seen out there, we've had Luke Harvey uh, take the win in Season 1, uh, Luke Harvey and Ian Ford Season 2, and we had quite a hiatus from it. We came back Season 7 where Jared Fussell took the win as well. So... Uh, a little bit of heritage there for the guys that can get up there and, and take the win. Um, we are expecting, you know, as we touched on last time out, some big areas where the guys can uh, not only make some opportunities, we're expecting some high risk and, and high reward scenarios. So off from the start of the race, obviously a little bit of a downhill for the guys at the back of the field to have to contend with. So trying not to get that car rolling is going to be key for the jump start, the run down through into turn one. We're expecting some two to three wide action for all the cars coming down into that one. It's very wide, very fast. A little touch of the brake to settle the nose, pitch it through and see how you, you come through on the other end and expect a lot of dirt to fly as the guys work their way through that. Down in towards turn three, if you can get that right, um, either from the run out of turn one, or down into turn three, either have an opportunity to, to reset the crisscross move or you can set yourself up for a fantastic run down the, uh, the very long straight down into turn five, which is a massively tight 90 degree corner, breaking at a premium to wide action as the guys work down their way through there. Get out of five, you head up the little hill in towards turn six. It's a blind entry and uh, 
really grip limited as you throw the car in there. It's a very flat surface. The cars are going to want to skate sideways as you work your way through that. So expect to see potential for a few issues, especially if you get someone trying to stick the nose down the inside. It's going to be very tricky to work your way through there. Get that right. Head on down through the hurry downs. Turn seven and eight. Cars are going to be, again, very, very twitchy as the guys work their way through, getting the power down, getting through the gears, absolute premium to not only get the lap time, but work your way through, try and set up either a move or, or defend those positions from there into the carousel. Probably one of the most famous corners uh, in motor racing, very long turn, uh, turns nine and 10, creates a huge amount of load on that left-hand side of the car. And for a circuit that is relatively high degradation on the tyres, Later on in the race, especially with this one being the 300 kilometer event, it's going to be really tricky to see how the the left front of the car holds up and what the guys have put into it to try and get some of the uh, the setup work sorted. From there, turn 11, uh, we'll head down into the kink massively quick in these cars. We don't have a lot of grip to play with. Um, we have seen some two wide action. Nine out of 10 times, it results in in a car being pitched into the fence. And if you don't make the fence, you're going to find the grass and, and there's no real way of coming back from that other than to lose a fistful of positions as everyone works their way down in towards Canada Corner. Canada Corner, again, 90 degrees on entry. Good opportunity for a pass. If you can get the run through the kink quite nice, you can set up for a, a really nice run. Draft massive down through there. Uh, get the brakes done down on the inside. You've got to watch out on the outside, though. You will find there is a lot of sand that we're expecting to be kicked up over the course of the run here uh, as everyone floats it out wide, out past the track limit, comes back across to set themselves up for 13, which is a quick kink through the left-hand side. A little bit of a rise as you come through, and the car's going to want to step out a bit on that right-hand side as you work your way through, but you've got to be quick to catch it so you can set yourself up down for turn 14, which is going to be at the bottom of the hill. You'll see the hill off to the, the top there. Come in through 14, get the nose in, get the power on as early as possible and set up again for a nice long run down to turn one. Slipstream is going to be huge. The run up through the hill, really important there, but you also got to keep an eye for the guys that are then going to want to try and get to the lane to complete the pit stops that we're going to expect to see there. So it's a big entrance for those guys to work their way through and a little bit of strategy that's definitely going to come into play for all of these guys. Well, Nori, you heard it there from Dan. I mean, there's going to be a lot of tyre wear going on really around that carousel. Uh, we've got 300 kilometres to deal with. How do you think the guys are going to make it home? What's going to be the strategy? Well, that's the thing, and Dan mentioned it perfectly. The pit entry for this one is is key because it is off the driver's right. You climb to the top of the hill and you've got to really stop. A bit like in Lagos, you've got that pit on at the top of the hill. So it's really tricky to get in there and it's really annoying to get offline. But... It's a 300k format, so pit strategy is going to be a bit different. A couple of different stops to make. We're estimating about 16 laps to a tank, and it's a long lap. So any mistake in the pit lane is going to cost you detrimentally out on circuit. Pit strategy for me, go long, empty the tank, go long, empty the tank. Do that a couple of times, you'll make it home. Well, let's see how James Scott goes this week, guys. I mean... Who are your predicted winners, Dan? I mean, do you think who do you think is going to be up the front there? I mean, we, we saw James. I don't think he's going to get his pit stop wrong this week. After last week, he's going to be all over it. Yeah, look, I think James is a hard one not to pick as a fan favourite to probably get the win. Um, definitely a few guys a little further down, and we saw some of them starting to come through. I think Michael Telly Anchich, a, a very good uh, driver to, to have a look at and maybe see how he goes. If he can nail the qualifying, we know from the last few seasons, right? just how good he is on uh, the fuel conservation. So he could definitely find his way into to play in contention. I still think Corey Shepard, Brian Borg are, are two other good drivers to, to keep an eye out. Also the Synergy cars, they're always going to be up towards that pointy end as well. And Nor Nori, how much do you think the drafting is going to come? The team will play an effect here. I mean, James Scott's a solo man. He's a, he's a lone cowboy out there, really. Can the can the you know the the synergy guys and the premier racing team boys can they use each other to draft and and take a bit of an advantage out of this one? Well, that's a massive advantage the teams do have. Premier and synergy running multiple cars versus James in the single lone Altus car. It's it's a massive advantage for those team cars. I was having a chat with Tom Frere post post race last week, and he was saying tire wear was fantastic in those synergy cars. So hopefully if they can keep this tire wear under control and not burn out their tires this week, they'll be up there. And if they can draft with each other, 
that's an that's something they can put in front of James Scott that he can't put in front of them. Well, I think it's going to be another big one. Round number two coming your way from Road America, guys. It is all happening Friday night, of course, 9, 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to go to AOSC TV on YouTube. And, of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. 9, 10 p.m. Friday night, the 22nd of January is round number two. It's race 180 in the history here of AOSC. Guys, I'm pumped. How about you guys? Cannot wait. I am absolutely looking forward to seeing this and the first of our 300K events for the season. What more could you want? Absolutely. Dan rightly points out they were fantastic to see last season. This season's going to be no different. We've mentioned the team aspect and we've mentioned the, uh, the, the track itself. So it's going to be fantastic to see. Let's hope it's a bloody good one. We'll see how round two plays out. We'll get that photo finished. Let's find out who's going to take it out then. We'll see you, of course. Don't forget, it is 9, 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. See you all for the race.